G'day folks, Starlo here coming to you live from the COVID lockdown bunker on the far south coast of New South Wales and we're bringing you a live stream tonight called Rock On. We're going to look at all manner of things to do with land-based and rock fishing which are some of my favourite kinds of fishing and I know that a lot of you out there really enjoy them too. I also know that a lot of you are along with me in lockdown at the moment. We're looking for fishing related things to do that we can do from home. I've been tying flies and making floats and uh, maintaining all my tackle and re-spooling reels and I'm sure a lot of you are in exactly the same boat. But what we want to do tonight is share some wonderful old footage with you from the Rex Hunt fishing adventure days. Look back on some of those stories. They'll be, they'll be new to some of you. Uh, there'll be great reminders for some of you as well. And then I'm going to show you a little bit of newer rock fishing, some of the stuff that I do these days. I'm getting a little bit older and slowed down a bit. I don't do quite as much adventurous stuff as I used to back in the, uh, in the 80s and 90s. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be able to get into some of those spots where we filmed on the Rex Hunt show back in those days anymore but I still love my rock fishing. And I've got a few strategies and philosophies for rock fishing that I reckon might be able to improve your results as well. I'm also gonna to touch on safety, and I know that turns a lot of people off, but seriously, rock fishing can be a pretty dangerous game. So don't tune out when I talk a little bit about the, the safety aspects of rock fishing as well. But look, we're gonna kick off tonight with a, a wonderful segment that uh, Rex and Bushy did at Dirk Hartog Island. Uh, it's off the coast of Shark Bay in Western Australia. This would have been shot in the mid nineties. And um, yeah, I know it's a, it's a favorite segment of a lot of people who are fans of the show. And but for those of you who've never seen it before, I think you're gonna really enjoy it as well. Have a look at this. G'day folks, I'm Rex Hunt and welcome to Dirk Hartog Island, where the fishing's supposed to be pretty good. Well, it ought to be. These are the hooks. <laughs> Look at that! The old bearded burbler, he's in his element. <laughs> Throw it into his mouth. Unbelievable, mate. It's just like nature. It's what we're all about. I tell you what, I tell you. <laughs> this is just fantastic. Wagon. For the rabbits. Just when they think it's safe to come out. Oh, it's not an animal! Bang! <laughs> I guess in the end that's probably why we all go fishing. Dutch explorer Dirk Hartog sailed into what is known today as Shark Bay. The island was named in his honour and today Dirk Hartog Island remains fairly secluded and wild. It's one of my very favourite fishing destinations because of its rugged beauty and its wide range of fish species. And it's one of my favourite feeding destinations as well, especially if you happen to be staying at Dirk Hartog Island Lodge. The lodge has all the comforts of home, and under the watchful eye of Kieran and Tori, you'll be treated like royalty. Karen didn't muck about getting out there before us. Bushy, it's been a clash of rods. Nasty clash of rods. Oh. Now I know how Armstrong and Aldrum and those other blokes on the moon actually, how'd you be playing golf on this? <laughs> I'd probably play better than I do on a golf course. You reckon? Yeah, I'm not the flash golfer. I tell you what, it's not bad looking water. 
mate. This is awesome. We've got the wind behind us. Yeah. Enough swell to make a bit of white water. <laughs> and enough height to keep away from that swell. It's looking good. Snapper by the oh, by the feel of this. Ooh, come on, thing. Oy, 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 oy. I reckon that's a snapper, and that's not a bad one. Ah, oh, got off. Did it? Oh, no. Oh, that was a big fish. Big one, was it? Yeah. So it was a big snapper, but it just got off. It's a scary spot. Scary thing, whatever it was. Get this other pilchard on. Last hook should go through his eye. That, what a long what have you tom, got, Rexy? Long Tom. Look at that. Didn't he inhale that fish pushy? Look at him, he probably gets some good jumps out of that. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh look at him go. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> Come on, mate. <laughs> Come up to see old Rexy, baby. Come on, up you come. Coming, coming, coming. Oh, look at this. Yeah, look at this. I need to do me drag up a bit. Look at this pushy. The Long <laughs> Thomas. Isn't that a sensational looking fish? <laughs> and that's why we've got that, uh, that particular rig on there, folks. We've got... A beautiful long tom, he's got very big teeth and he's got that particular rig right down him. So I'm going to cut that off just like that. Look at that dentistry there. A beautiful example of a fish that is born to exist. And I tell you what, if you're piscatorially inclined and you end up in those choppers, you end up, well, in this bloke's stomach. Back you go, mate. I'll give you a little bit of a fling. You ready? Go now. The tide's up and away you go. Ha <laughs> ha, there he goes. And oh, look at him go. What is it? What, what do you think you've got, Rexy? I don't know. I don't... Oh, it might be another... Oh, he's going towards that reef. <laughs> oh. Come away from there, mate. Oh, no. Oh, he's coming this side. Oh, he's coming this side. I reckon it's another one of those things he lost, Bushy. Look at the size of him. Look at the size of this. I think it's another one of those gold spot trevally, I think. Oh. Look at that! Real original Tara, I'd say. He's going to come out from that white water there. You'll get a glimpse of him. Look at that! There he comes. Oh! Look at the size of that bushy! <laughs> Look at that! Give him some, Rex. Oh. Oh. Come away from there, mate. Oh, bushy. Look, oh, bushy. Look at the size of this fish. <laughs> oh, no! Give him some stick, Rex. You've got plenty of line power. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 I'm aching all over. You've got him. All right. Well done, Rexy. Thank you. Come on. Oh. <laughs> 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 this is absolutely amazing. Hold this, Bushy. <laughs> this, is, this is rock fishing. <laughs> is that not bad at all? That's unbelievable. What type of fish is it? Well, I think it's a, a tarum, a proper tarum. 
Um, better known as a gold spot Trevally. The adults lose a bit of the gold. They've still got a little bit of gold on some of these spots, but I'd call him as a, a proper tar on the fight, of course. This family is a real street fighter. Oh, they pull hard. They really do. But I tell you what, to be able to do that off the rocks, he's still got plenty of kick in him. I'll just wait for this. There's a nice bit of tide now, mate. And go now. Away we go. He's, he's good, mate. I tell you what. No, that's not a bad capture. You know, I said a street fighter. I reckon Brute Bernard, George the Animal Steel and Spiris Arian have piled driven me into this area here. I'm aching all over, but isn't it a marvellous feeling? It's like a league grand final, isn't it? It certainly is. That first one, I hope, just put me to the cleaners, but you've, uh, you've saved us, Rexy. For our young folk at home, these big fish are not in here just looking for you and I. They're, they're in here for some serious dining. There's a lot of tucker down here around these washes. And that ocean, there's nothing, I don't know even what's on the other end of that, but there's a long way before you hit land. Well, I can tell you, Zimbabwe, Harare. Right? You go right? over there, you get taken by a lion. I reckon that's the only thing that might take us here today, folks. Now, seriously, parents, this is not for everyday anglers. You've got to come here with people who know the place. Kieran Wardle, a very, very good example. And you've got to have the right footwear, and you've got to have your mind on the job all the time. But I tell you what, you combine all those things, Bushy, and uh, yibbity yibbity. Got a good day. You didn't even see my lips move, folks. <laughs> Let's do it again. That's a beautiful, beautiful crab. Look at the colours on him. He's got purple and white and a little bit of cream. And if you have a look in this rock pool, there's a purple algae type seaweed growing. You've got bits of shell grit that have been tossed up here over the years of time. And all of the Indian Ocean wash has gone back in here. And you just wonder how they got up here. And this is a complete ecosystem right here with a hole in the rock. Oh, you had a go at my toe there, mate. I love rock pools in the 50s and 60s on the shores of Port Phillip Bay. And I love them at the uh, wrong end of my life, folks. They're a marvellous, intricate example of what the ocean's all about. I'm talking about the ocean. Uh, no kisses for you, mate. Off you go. And tell your mates that Rexy was here. Uh, as I said, talking about the ocean, folks. Uh, I might become part of the ocean if I don't get out of here. It's getting near high tide. Thank you very much. Shouldn't give them too much line here, should we? Because they'll just go under the ledge. No, if they take off with it, they're in trouble. Whack him straight away. Oh, whacked him, all right. I got one too. Have you? Oh, I just had a bite. Well, you come over here. Go over this side. Oh, gee whiz. Look at the birds come in too. Oof. I have no idea what this is. This is a, a big, deep thumping fish. Might be a snapper. Um, I don't know. No, it's silver. It's silver. It might be another one of our another tarum, maybe. tarum friends. Oh, I tell you what. <laughs> this is just, this is solid fishing. I tell you what, you wouldn't need to go to the gym or run a marathon to get fit doing this. Oh, he's got a Trevally feel about him now, Bushy. It might be the same. Feel that power. I just like being connected to him, you know, and feeling the power of the fish. Lifting and winding. And the laser line is 30 pound in the old scale. And then... I've got some clear line, 50 pound breaking strain as a shock leader, and now I'm doing is I've got 50 pound pressure on him with about a 35 to 40 pound drag on the reel, and he's not going to go very, very far. We hope. At all. <laughs> well, we do hope. 
We do like to be beside the seaside. Oh, a big bull chin groper. Uh, well, you are joking. Last time I was here, our resident chef Ian Pochran cooked me some of this. Oh, look it's at the best fish. Look at the power on that. Woo. Yeah, but the power, Karen. I don't think this one should go back, Rexy, if we get him. It should go back to uh, Victoria and she can cook it for us tonight. Looks like it might be. You got enough rope to get to him? Got him? OK. Well done. Got him? Oh, well done. Oh, no, he hasn't got him. We have, we haven't, we have. <laughs> have we now? Good boy. Well done. I'll tell you what he is. It's safe. <laughs> My favourite eating fish. Look at that. That is a serious <laughs> bald chin groper. I tell you what, this bloke's not going to go back at all, Bushy. Look at the teeth on him. Yeah. <laughs> Look at those teeth. The teeth are serious teeth, and that's why we've got that wire there. I'll just get that out of that. Kieran can untangle this, but the old cliff gaff, you're going to be, uh, well, doing it into the proverbial very big hurricane if you don't use one of these. You'd be dead if you didn't use one of yeah. these. Bald chin because of the white chin, bald head uh, because of the bald head. I'm a bald-headed groper or grouper, and I tell you what, this is one of the best eating fish in the sea. Now, I put it, folks, in the same class as fresh gummy shark, which is flake from Bass Strait in Victoria, and I reckon the Patagonian toothfish that the Perth people sent us to try, I tell you what, comes very close. But tonight, we dine back at the magnificent homestead of Dirk Hartog Island on bald chin grover and the bald man and the moustache. <laughs> well, we eat tonight, uh, but I don't reckon we could eat for about five days and we'd still be as big as we are. Uh, can you get a couple of puffer fish for the crew? Because I think this should be ours, man. Coming right up. <laughs> Your wish is my command. been knocked off by the long toms out there a little bit so thought I'd just drop one down there probably a reef fish or something having a bit of a tap 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 it oh oh <laughs> I don't know what this is bushy a snapper is it Look like a snapper when he nah, came up in the water. Nah, sweet, lip. sweet lip. What a beautiful looking fish. Now that that is one of the pretty fish in the sea. I tell you now. Oh, it's a long way down there. I know how the giraffes feel now. But that is just a beautiful example of why we go fishing. Look at the colours on that fish. Look, that is just fantastic. A lot of fish like this particular. Sweet lip use these colours to their advantage. What they do is they I'll just get that out of you, mate. Just like that. What they use is the colours of the brilliant yellows and reds to attract little fish that come in and think, gee, this is a nice place to stay. There's some good shelter here. Or better still, there might be a feed. And what happens is even around his mouth, the little fish come in and around here and chomp. And they're just an absolute feeding machine. The eyes on top of the head, similar to a mangrove jack. And apparently they're fantastic eating. I think we've got enough to eat tonight, folks. We'll be like King Kong Bundy to put all that particular groper down our throat. There you are, mate. I'll just wait for a little wave to come up. We'll pop you back. You can probably go back in there now. And away he goes. I gave the entry seven, but the finishing off was a ten. Thank you very much. Can you see me judging the Olympic diving, folks? I'd rather be fishing on Dirk Hartog Island on 
<laughs> Dirk Hartog. Where Island. are we? Dirk Hartog Island. Where are we here? Rexy's Ledge. No, <laughs> it's Rexy's Rock. <laughs> and never forget it. Thank you very much. How good was that? It's a few years since I've watched that segment myself and I enjoyed it just as much this time around as I did originally. I wasn't actually on that trip, as you could see. That was one that Rex and Bushy did on their own, but we did many, many trips together, of course, the three of us and Bushy and I did a lot of trips just on our own. I'm gonna show you one of those in a minute, but Dirk Hardog Island is one of the most remarkable places that I've been to around the Australian coastline. As I said, it's off, off the coast of Shark Bay in, in Western Australia. And that entire stretch of coast up there is amazing. And although that was shot well over 20 years ago, probably 25, 26 years ago, I'm here to tell you that the fishing in that part of the world is still every bit as good today. It is probably some of the best land-based and, and rock fishing anywhere in the world. And you can get there, well, maybe not at the moment with the COVID lockdowns, but when all, all that stuff finishes, doesn't matter where you are in Australia, you can get over there and actually go fishing there yourself. Not that easy to get onto Dirk Hardog Island, but I've actually got a mate who, who lives in Perth these days. He's originally from the south coast of New South Wales, a guy by the name of Robbie Riches. And uh, he runs a company called Perth Fishing Safaris out of Perth, does a lot of beach and drone fishing in, in the Perth metropolitan area. But he takes groups up to that Quabba coast. And more recently, he's been taking groups out to Dirk Hartog Island uh, for five days, a week at a time, uh, living in shacks out there. He, he feeds them really well and, uh, and, and takes them fishing on those rock platforms and the beaches. It is just amazing fishing. So if you're interested in checking it out, um, get onto Robbie's Facebook page on uh, Perth Fishing Safaris and you'll find all his contact details and everything there. Tell him Starlo sent you. It is really, really a great trip. It was interesting to, to look at the, the gear that, um, that Rex and Bushy were using in that Dirk Hardog segment. The long rods are important, you know, that's a, that's a real safety consideration on the rocks because it allows you to just stay back that little bit from the edge, which was pretty important where they were because if you went in off the edge of there, you wouldn't have a whole lot of chance of getting out. The lower ledges are covered in razor sharp oysters and they, there's a constant surge there. That Indian Ocean is a pretty spooky bit of water, I've got to tell you. Uh, you know, people talk about freak waves and they don't really exist uh, other than tsunamis. But over in that part of the world, the Indian Ocean throws up what they call king waves. So every day you get a couple of sets of swells that just seem to be significantly larger than anything else you've seen on the day and it's something you really really got to be aware of so that's why it's good to go with someone like Robbie as well who who really knows his stuff now look another trip that burns brightly in my memory banks and this was one that Bushy and I did together Rex wasn't on this one we went across and we did a big four-wheel driving safari with a mate of ours by the name of Peter Woods fantastic bloke from from Perth and uh, and a bunch of his friends and we we four-wheel drived from Perth down across the bottom past Esperance and out into the Great Australian Bight. And that is some of the wildest, most remote and most beautiful country I've ever seen. And one particular spot called Tallinnie Cove that we went to burns in my memory banks as probably one of the most dramatic places I've ever been to. Unfortunately, I don't think you can go to this one anymore. They've removed the, the climbing ropes and the ladders because of the, the dangerous aspects of them, which you'll see in a minute. But Bushy and I got there, we camped overnight at the tops of the cliffs, and then we walked up to the cliff edge in the morning to climb down. And I think uh, if you watch Bushy's reaction to this, it's pretty fair dinkum. Have a look at this. Finally got here. I've had a beautiful sleep. The moon's been out. The company in the tent wasn't all that good, but I've had a great night. I had the brekkie. I'm ready to go. Only one uh, slight thing yet. There's apparently a 300 foot drop to get down there. Now, Arthur, you've saved my life on the sandboarding. Thanks, mate. What do I got to do to get down this ladder? Thanks, mate. Look, it's pretty easy, really. You just don't look down. Hang on, and count to 300. 
count to 300? 300 steps and you'll be down there. Oh. There's ladders and ropes, so it, it's not really difficult. Um, just take it, take it easy and you'll be okay. Joking, I'm not going down there. There's no way. Have a look. Oh, salmon. There's <laughs> salmon down there, mate. Oh, I still don't want to go down there. Yeah, look there. behind them. Oh, look at the shark. <laughs> <laughs> Big sharky. Don't think about it. Put these gloves on. Oh, God, that's a long way down there, mate. It's a long way. But uh, we Not take it one fine. step at a time. Yep. Go down backwards, put your feet one after the other, just glance over your shoulder, and once you've got a spot, put your foot down on it. You'll get down to another section, new rope, a uh, lot stronger, uh, and there's a little traverse. You go across that traverse, don't look down, then you're on ladders, and it's, the rest is really easy. Really easy. No problem at all. All right, with this really strong rope tied to this rusty peg, Arthur. Yeah, it won't break, guaranteed. Won't break. Won't I'll go break. first, and um, then you come behind. I'll take the rods so you've got your hands free, and right. we'll see on the bottom. Okay. Go for it, Arthur. I'm not going in there. No, no, you're going across there. No, no way. You sure? Yep. I'll stay at the top, you can just say oh, I will stay out down down there. Whew. Well I'm about halfway down and I guess in many ways the worst of it is behind me, but I'm still going to be very careful. I gotta tell you my palms are a little bit clammy in these gloves and I've got a bit of a tremble in the knees. Now Bushy has opted to remain on top. He got part of the way down, didn't like the look of it, didn't like the look of the gear that we were climbing on and decided to stay on top. And I tell you what, I admire him for making that decision. Sometimes it takes a bigger man to say that he doesn't want to do something than to be forced into it by peer group pressure from others. This is not the sort of thing you want to do unless you're 100% certain that you know what you're doing and also that you understand the risks that you're taking. I am taking a bit of a risk. I've done it before. I wouldn't recommend it for a lot of people though. Well, I made it. Knees are like jelly. And I'm sweating a bit. I think I'm getting too old for this caper. I think Bushy might have made the right decision, but those fish are still there. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, folks, it's not too often that I can confidently predict that I'm going to hook a fish on my very first cast, but I'd take money on this one. Out goes the lure. Yeah, and I've got him! Oh, took about six turns of the handle, I guess, after the lure hit the water, before the first hard-fighting Australian salmon just climbed all over it. <laughs> I tell you what, I've fished some magnificent places all over the world, but I can't think of too many that would top this one in terms of the backdrop, the sheer beauty and grandeur of the place, and the quality of fishing. This fish I've got on, he's coming into the surf now, Woo. Come on, I'll get him in that wave. Up the beach he comes. Just use the power of the water. Don't fight the water. If he does that, it starts to run back. Sometimes you've got to let him go. They're so lively. Beautiful fish. I'll bleed him out and he'll be great for the table. Stevie! 50 metres, 2 o'clock! OK! Oh, yes. 
цены. Now this is an absolute last ditch pathetic effort to catch a fish at Tallinn Cove. I'm going to cast off this cliff. I don't even know whether I'll reach the water, but here goes. Ah, I can't even watch it going. This could be the longest cast I've ever done. It's still going. Got there. I can't. This is too bad. Well, I think this might fall into the category of biting off more than you can chew. There's been a shark in here terrorising this school of salmon that I'm fishing for. So I put one of the smaller salmon on and just threw him back in the surf and within seconds the shark came in and I could see him hunting the salmon and then bang he hit it and now I'm hooked up to quite a decent whaler shark and I think it's just too much animal for this gear but it's a lot of fun. Whoa. I got him. I got him at the moment anyway. I'm away from the rocks you bugger. There he goes out through the surf. He might have spat it. Uh, well, folks, he jumped out of the water and threw the bait. Well, that's what he did to my bait. And you can see there by the size of each individual tooth hole and the size of the bait bite radius that he was a pretty decent shark. That was a lot of fun. I might have to try that again. another salmon. Oh, he bit my balloon. He's got the balloon. I don't think he's got it. Uh, he missed it again. That's it. Shark. Big shark coming in. He's on the attack run. Okay, he's got him. Whoa! Oh, what a take! Woo -hoo -hoo. I think I'm getting a nibble. I don't think he's got it. Leave the balloon alone. <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. I think he's got him this time. <laughs> you have got to be kidding. He's eating the balloon. He ate the balloon as well. I hate that. He's hooked him up. Yes, sir. -y. He has definitely got the bait. I'm just getting, let him get it down a little bit. He's swimming around out there looking for another one now. Probably time to set the hook. Let everything come tight. And yes! Oh boy! Ah. Oh, he doesn't like that. He does not like that at all. Oh, I can feel the big head shakes. He's trying to get rid of it. He's trying to throw that bait out of his mouth. Suddenly he's realised that that salmon he ate is just not quite kosher. And he's trying to get rid of it. We're only using fairly small hooks. And I'm hitting these sharks quite early because I'm trying to get a jaw hook up so that I can release them. I don't really want to hurt them. I'm not looking for a big deep hook up with large hooks or anything. Oh, this is good fun.
Big run. Whoa. He's a bit of a runner, this one. Just trying to use the waves to roll him towards me, this shark. Oh, he's got other ideas though. This shark is way out over the back of the bar into deep water now. The biggest problem I've got is if the line finds a rock or something out there, it'll just cut straight through. Oh, he's got a lot of line out now. I sound a bit short of breath, it's because I am. <laughs> this has been a fairly torrid little encounter. This is not normally the sort of thing you try to do single-handed, but it certainly makes it a challenge. It's me against the shark. If I can just get his head pointed up the beach, but he keeps wanting to point it back out, which is hardly surprising. You hold the rod. I'll go in and trace him. I don't want to break any. No, no, you'll be right. If you just keep it down fairly low, yeah. you can put your thumb on it a little bit, but if it really pulls, just let it slide off. Don't, don't put too much on it. Right. You can wind a little bit if you get a chance, but don't pull. And if I say so, just point it at him and, and let go of the line. Come on! Well, we got him. I got him now. What are we going to do now? Oh, I can actually get the hook out. It's right here. As you can see, he's a fair-sized shark. He's about as long as me. Come on, fella. How'd you go? You ready? Go! Well, definitely looks like we're back in civilization, Bushy. Unfortunately. <laughs> back out on the blacktop. We've just done about 700 kilometres through one of the most remote parts of Australia, and we've seen some outstanding sights, haven't we, mate? I think it's one of the best trips I've ever done, I'd have to say. It just blew me away. What was the highlight for you? Well, I think the real highlight was that huge sand dune. And getting on that piece of polished board, Mate, that was just terrific. But what about all those the, the sharks and the salmon at Tallinnie Cove? Well, that would be one of the best places I've almost been, I have to say. <laughs> almost been, I love it. Look, seriously, folks, we have seen some wonderful things. And, and it's just the most remote place you could get to. And to see the fish still in their natural state, we really need to look after places like this. Oh, I don't know if I was braver or dumber in those days. I think dumber. I wouldn't do a lot of that stuff nowadays, that's for sure, even if I was physically capable of it, which I'm probably not. That climb down into that place, I've done that about half a dozen times now, and every single time it's um, it gets you shaking and it's awe-inspiring. And oh, yeah, what a what an amazing part of the world. And the, the sharks... We, I must have hooked at least six or eight of those sharks, and you can probably tell the way that it was cut together. That there were different different shark encounters there. They were sort of mixed together, and we were sort of trying to capture the, the highlights. I only managed to get one of them in onto the sand, and it was by far the smallest one that I hooked, and it was still pretty fair-sized bronzy. And I don't know what I was doing, wrestling it and grabbing it like that in the surf. It would have been so easy for it to spin around and chomp onto my shin or my arm or whatever. I don't do this at home, folks. I'll tell you what, I used to do some crazy stuff. Got to tell you another little story about that trip to, to, to Linny Cove. 
I mentioned in it that we were eating the salmon and a lot of people don't really hold Australian salmon in particularly high regard as an eating fish, but uh, I don't mind them, particularly if you bleed them straight away and you cut away all the red meat when you fill it and skin them and they cook up quite nicely. And those ones from down there in that part of the world, I don't know whether it's the clean water or whatever, they're the best ones I've ever tasted. But we kept about six or eight and rather than carrying them back up all those ladders and ropes, there's an old... Um, uh, pulley system there you might have seen the framework for it on the edge of the cliff and they used to use it to lower gear down and, and bring it up and we decided to bring the fish up using the flying box uh, pulley so we put it put the six or eight salmon in a basket it was nearly dark climbed out attached the wire cable to the back of the four wheel drive one of the four wheel drives and just drove it away slowly through the bush and i was at the edge watching it come up and i was going to wave and tell them to stop driving when the basket got to the top as i say last vestiges of light and this pulley wheels creaking around and around and the baskets coming up through the dark and then suddenly back in the bush behind me i hear this like a rifle shot and the cable had broken and the pulley started going back the other direction and accelerated very rapidly as that basket started to fall the 300 feet through the air and then I heard this other sound and it was the end of the cable coming through the bush behind me, scything from one side to the other like a demented snake actually cutting down shrubs as it was coming. And I'm standing there right next to the, to the framework. So I just threw myself flat on the ground and the wire went over my head and out through the end of the pulley. And I can just remember the silence afterwards and the little pulley wheels still going <laughs> as it slowed down. It was a, a, a dramatic moment. And one of us, we picked the youngest bloke in the group, had to climb all the way back down there and get those fish, bring them back up in his backpack. We cooked them up that night. And I got to tell you, they were the best salmon I've ever eaten. So if you want to eat really good salmon, you've got to drop tenderize it from 300 feet. That's my tip. <laughs> All right, look, it's been fantastic bringing you um, this live stream tonight. And, and we're going to bring you more in, in future. But jump on and ask us questions and stuff too. And give us some ideas about some of the other stuff you'd like to see from the Rex Hunt Show in the past, and some of the new stuff you'd like to see and what you'd like to hear us talk about. But before we wrap up, I want to show you a much more modern segment about the kind of rock fishing that I mostly do these days, which is uh, a little bit more local and a little bit less dramatic. And I made this, um, this video clip called Stepping Stones to Fishing Success. It's going to be a series for Shimano Australia. I've been a Shimano pro angler for 20 or 30 years and, and quite closely associated with Shimano, do a lot of work with them. And I, I did this how-to video targeting black drummer or rock blackfish, pigs, whatever you want to call them, just from my local rocks about oh, 800 metres from where I'm sitting doing this um, live stream at the moment. So this is real homegrown fishing using much lighter tackle, targeting fish that we can all go and catch, but there's also a really, really important safety message in this clip. So watch closely. G'day, Starlo here. Welcome to another episode of Stepping Stones to Fishing Success, brought to you by Shimano. And today, I'm literally stepping on stones because I'm going rock fishing. Now, this is a kind of fishing that's got a reputation for being quite dangerous, and it certainly can be if you get it wrong. So I'm gonna give you a couple of safety messages, and I hope you don't mind. To begin with, just make sure you know what the conditions are. Use a couple of good weather apps, check out the swell size, have a look at the tides, and then when you get to your spot, don't just charge straight down to the water. Sit in a safe vantage point for about 15 or 20 minutes and just watch your ledge that you intend to fish. See if there's any swells coming across it. Wear the right clothing and footwear. And I always these days wear an inflatable PFD in case I did end up in the water. If you do all those things and you're a little bit careful about what you're doing, rock fishing can be so much fun, especially if you keep it nice and light like I like to and put a bit of burley in. I'm gonna mix up some burley now. What I've got here is a bucket of old bread scraps. I've been keeping all our old stale bread at home and just sticking it in the freezer. And I've added some water. And I'm also gonna add some of this. This is just green weed or cabbage weed that grows here on the rocks. So I'm mulching all this up because if I just throw the bread straight in dry, it's just gonna float away. All it'll attract is seagulls. But if I turn it into a nice porridge, it'll do the trick. 
So I'm just gonna throw in a couple of hand pulls to start with, and then every time I rebate or go to make another cast, I'll throw another small hand pull in, just right at my feet where the wave action will break it up and carry it out to the fish. You wanna start a continuous stream of burley that'll bring the fish to you and make them hungry, not feed them too much. Because I'm putting my burley in right here at my feet, I don't want to cast out too far. I just want to fish this broken white water where it's coming across the rocks and it gives the fish some cover and it's also where the burley is. So a nice short cast is really all I'm going to need. There's something. Oh. It's, I don't think it's what we're after. Oh. Ah, well, it is. <laughs> That's a black drummer or a rock blackfish, but it's certainly not the size I was looking for. But it's a good sign that there's a few there in the burley already. So I'll carefully unhook this little bloke and get him straight back into the water. Off you go, mate. Oh, what do we got? Oh. Something picked it up on the way in. Ooh. Oh, it's another, it's another drummer. It's a little bit small, that one. It's probably very close to the 30 centimetres, but if they're even close, I let them go. They're always just hooked in the mouth, so they're easy to unhook. And I'll get him straight back in the water. This gear I'm using is exactly my favourite outfit on the beach as well. It's a really light rod. It's 10, 10 and a half foot long, a bit over three metres, but it's extremely light with a light tip. I've only got a 2,500 size reel on it, spooled up with 10 pound braid, and I'm running a 16 pound leader at the moment, about a rod length of leader. It's light gear for drummer fishing, but boy oh boy, you get a lot more bites and hook a lot more fish. You might lose the odd fish, but that's a bit of a trade-off and it's so much fun. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, that might be the right kind. Oh, come on. Oh, this is where the long rod comes in handy for steering them around the rocks. Oh, he's a good fish. He's a good fish. Oh, oh. <laughs> and then I've got to start looking for somewhere to wash him out. And this little channel here is probably as good as anywhere. Well, that's what we're after. That's a black drummer, also known as a rock blackfish. One of the best eating fish in this part of the world, believe it or not. A lot of people don't realise that, but filleted and skinned, these are just absolutely delicious. I'm looking for a couple of these to take home for a meal, and I'd actually rather take them home at that size than the big ones. I can let the big ones go. That was too much fun. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, did me, like a dinner. Woo, that was a good one. I'm using about the simplest rig you could possibly imagine. It's just a small sinker running freely on my leader right down to about a number one to one o, possibly two o size hook, just depending on what sort of fish I'm expecting to encounter. This rig is great around the rocks. It's simple to tie. It doesn't snag up all that often, believe it or not. And when it does snag up, you can bounce the rod tip and quite often the sinker banging on the hook will de-snag it. Now for bait, I'm just using frozen prawns this morning. But listen, when you buy your prawns, make sure they're Australian caught or Australian farmed. Don't use imported prawns because they can carry diseases from overseas and introduce them into our marine waterways. Now I like to peel the prawn, so I'm just gonna break the head off. And that always goes into the water to become part of my burley trail. And then I just deshell the prawn again. All the shell bits go into the water. They all add to that attractive trail that we're making. Still a little bit frozen, this one, but that's all right. And there we go. That's going to be my bait. I could possibly get two baits out of that, but eh, I'm a great believer in big bait, big fish. So let's see. Got him. Oh, yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah, come on. Oh, he's found a rock. Oh. Come out. Oh. Oh, he found a rock, but I got him out. 
what happens when you're on light gear you don't get them all that was a really good drummer and he wrapped me up in one rock obviously chafed the leader enough that uh, I just couldn't hold him when he went for the second rock pop the leader Woo. well there you go I hope you enjoyed that and got a few tips out of it that's the kind of rock fishing that you can do around a big stretch of the Australian coastline but Listen to those and take on board those safety messages that I that I passed on there as well about wearing the right footwear, wearing the right clothing, observing the spot where you're going to fish for at least 20 minutes before you go down onto the ledge. That's really important. Knowing what the sea conditions are doing, whether the tide's rising or falling, whether the swell's rising or falling, and wear one of those PFDs. You know, I look back on that stuff we did 20 odd years ago and we were never wearing life jackets on the rocks. You didn't see anyone wearing life jackets on the rocks in those days, but it makes so much sense to do it. And those inflatable vests, they're not uncomfortable. They don't get in the way, they're not bulky. So just whack one on, it could just save your life. Uh, it, it, it's worth doing. Look, I really hope you've enjoyed uh, this rock on live stream if you did let us know because we'd like to do some more for you let us know some of the topics that you'd you'd like to cover we've been taking some questions um, through the stream this evening and I've been trying to answer as many of them as I can and I know that Rex is in the Melbourne studio trying to do the same thing you can you can catch these on both my own YouTube channel Starlo gets real uh, which might be where you're watching it now, or you might be watching it on Rex's, the Rex Hunt Fishing Adventures YouTube channel. It's live streaming on both of them and, and we'd love to do it again. We're really enjoying doing this during uh, lockdown. I know a lot of you around the country can't get out for a fish at the moment, or if you can, you can't go very far. Um, you can also follow my fishing adventures through um, Starlo's Fishatopia uh, page on, on Facebook and my Starlo's Fish Fishatopia Instagram account. And of course, Rex is really active again these days on his Rex Hunt Fishing Adventures uh, page on Facebook. So don't be a stranger, keep up with us. We'd love to get your feedback. We've really enjoyed talking to you tonight. Take care out there, follow your local advice, Listen, get, get the jab. I know that a lot of people are a little bit hesitant about the vaccine, and I was a bit myself, to be honest, but weigh up the, the risks, and I think it makes sense. The more of us that get vaccinated, the sooner we'll probably be able to get back out there and enjoy the great outdoors. Anyway, look, this is Starlo. Until next time, wishing you tight lines. <laughs>